Hello and welcome to the SDA pool plant information videos. Um, today we're going to just look, take a look through understanding filtration velocities. So the first thing that we need to look through is the basic principles of filtration. Um, remember that with your filtration system, you've got your sand bed, minimum of 800 mil, and your water passing vertically down through that sand bed. It's important to remember that regulating the flow is one of the most important elements. The slower the speed through that sand vertically downwards, the better the more efficient the filtration is going to be. So we're going to take an in-depth look at that speed and how we calculate it. So your flow rate. Your flow rate is your volume of water per hour delivered via your circulation pumps. That's a measurement of volume, so that's going to come in meters cubed per hour. Your filtration velocity is the vertical speed through the filter. So that's a speed. So that's a time over a distance, so that's going to be meters uh, per second, which is also equivalent to a cubic meter in a square meter in an hour. So just bear that in mind later as we go through the presentation. So your basic schematic then of a swimming pool, what you'll see there is you've got your water flow coming from your balance tank, from your sumps, and then that's going into your pump. Now your pump there is integral to the circulation rate. Okay, That's determining the flow rate, the speed of water, the volume, the turnover time. So if that pool is sitting there at 300 cubic meters an hour and you've got 150 cubic meters an hour flow rate, that's a two hour turnover time. So that's an important element that's going to affect the filtration velocity, the speed downwards through the filter. As we move on then, you take for example your hose pipe at home, you have no adapter on the end and you're filling up a bucket. It flows nicely. As soon as you start to squeeze the end and make the, the air surface area smaller at the hose pipe, the velocity, the speed increases. The bucket will still fill at exactly the same time. So I want you to imagine taking your pipe work going into your filter, and then you're just going from one small pipe into a bigger pipe. And it's the size of this pipe then that will determine the speed. So if you were to look downwards on top of your filter, it's gonna be in a circle shape. Now we have to work out the surface area of that, of that filter to start with. Now on most conventional filters, this will be indicated on the side or in the manufacturer's guidance document. But if you want to work it out, it's a simple method. Area of a circle is pi r squared. So we've got our two filters here to take comparison. We've got one with a 1.5 meter radius. We times that pi times by 1.5 times by 1.5 and that gives us a nice 7.07 .07 meter squared surface area. Our second filter, which is slightly smaller, only has a one meter radius. Okay, so that's going to give us a 3.14 meter squared surface area. Now, remember the flow rate, that speed delivered from the circulation pumps, divided by the surface area of that filter is going to give you the filtration velocity, the downward speed through that filter. Just go straight back to the beginning, speed is key, the slower the better. So let's take a worked example then. We're going to have our circulation pumps and they're going to deliver us 100 cubic meters of water an hour. Okay, so that's the flow rate coming through that pipe work. As we then in enter into our filter one, if you remember, that had a surface area of 7.0 meters squared. Okay, so 100 cubic meters volume of water divided by 7.0, and that gives us 14.14 cubic meters per square meter per hour. That's the velocity, the speed. Take filter two with a surface area of 3.14, Okay, put that into the, exactly the same equation, and then that's going to give us 31.85 meters squared per square meter per hour. So that's going a lot faster than the other filter. Now, we categorize filtration down to two types. We have medium rate filtration between 10 and 25 cubic meters per square meter per hour, and then we have high rate filtration, which is anything above 25. Now what we're looking for is we want medium rate filtration, nice and slow. So that filter that was just 0.5 of a metre bigger in radius gave us effective medium rate filtration. That slightly smaller one gave us high rate filtration. It's going to be very difficult with that high rate filter to eliminate those very small particles. Okay, for example, cryptosporidium is somewhere in the region of 3 to 5 microns in size. That will pass through any high rate filter, whether you're using a flocculent dosing or not. So if we just take a sideways look then um, at your filter, what you've got here is you've got, for example, if you imagine that your filter then is split into square meters, so 
the, the flow rate is on the one filter it was around 15 cubic meters per square meter per hour. Now if you imagine here that you've got a one meter squared channel running straight through the filter, it's a cubic meter in volume going through that square meter channel. So the more channels you have, the more water at the end is coming out. So this is just really showing you for the example, an example of the fact that the flow rate, the flow rate is still exactly the same. It just means the bigger it is, the more that can come through at a slower speed. The more condensed it is, the faster it's going to have to travel through because the same quantity has to be at the end. Remember your hose pipe. Leave it plain, it will flow slower, but will still fill at the same time as if you squeeze it and you make the speed quicker. Okay, so the more square meters you have, the slower the speed, the velocity. Okay, and that concludes our, our very short presentation on filtration velocity.